Shalom, shalom, shalom. Once again, we are Israel united in Christ. We are here to teach you who you are according to the Bible. Yes. Check, 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 check. All right, we are to teach you who you are according to the Bible and what you must do to receive salvation. Now, when you go into the Bible, all throughout time, the prophets always warned the people of destruction to come. And we are going to do the same thing in these last days. When you go, you look up Jeremiah, when you look up Jonah, when you look up Noah, they always want the people. So it's not by chance in 2018 that the prophets are here teaching our people out of the Bible what they must do to escape destruction. That's right. Now, everybody in the world knows who Donald Trump is. All black people say they hate Donald Trump, but they do not understand the spiritual things that this man is doing on the face of the earth. Now we're going to go and we're going to show you some current events and we're going to show you exactly how they correlate with the Bible. We're going to read an article. I want you to read that article for me. Shut space for us is, not, is no joke. Uh -huh. It might even work. <laughs> Trump's space force is no joke. Uh -huh. It might even work. The military is heavily reliant on space, uh -huh. but its approach now is dysfunctional. So, what we're reading, what we're about to get into, is how Donald Trump is saying that the space is the next place where we need to defend. Yep. Now, if you understand America, every time we do something, they have an objective. When they wanted to rid the black, Hispanic, and Native American community, what did they do? They had the war on drugs. Right. When they wanted to go overseas, what did they have? They had the war on terror. Right. Now when they understand that we're in the last days, guess what? Now they're taking the war to space. Right. Why? Because they understand that the last person that can come against this world is Jesus the Christ. Right. And they know exactly where he's coming from. Right. He's coming from space. He's right. coming from the sky. And we're going to show you that out of the Bible. Keep reading this article. President Donald Trump's desire to add a space force to the U.S. military has elicited plenty of mockery. So, first off, we got to understand Trump, it has been put in his spirit to want to create a space force. That is not by chance. That is not by, by a roll of the dice. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1. I'm going to show you where that came from. The Most High God is in control of all your political, all your spiritual powers, whether you believe it or not. God is in control. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The what? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So understand, whether you want to be against Trump or for Trump, understand, whatever he does, good, bad, or indifferent, it is ordained by God. Right. Read that again. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of the water, he turn them in with the with thereso'ever he will. So the most high God is going to make him do whatever he wants him to do. Right. Go back to that order. Bring it up. President Donald Trump's desire to add a space force to the U.S. military has elicited plenty of mockery and puzzlement. But don't dismiss. Don't dismiss the idea. If undertaken prudently, it could represent a substantial and forward-looking reform. Although Trump offered fewer details, Congress has been mulling in similar concepts for years. So understand it says that they have been going over these concepts in their mind for years. Don't think the white man has not thought about this. They have been reading this Bible since the moment this came into their hands. Right. They understand who the last defender on earth is. Like I said before, nothing they do is by chance. Keep reading. The idea would be to create a new military branch. A what? A new military branch. Now, why would America need a new military branch? Has anybody seen the German forces on our earth on, in American soil? Has anybody seen a Russian army on our soil? Has anybody seen a Chinese army on our soul? No. 
So why do we need another force on the face of the earth? We're not being oppressed as a nation because they know who, who's coming to oppress them. Keep reading. Or a new service within the Air Force uh -huh. dedicated to overseeing operations in space. Trump said this week in unfortunate language that he envisions the new entity as a separate but equal to the Air Force. If nothing else, such a shift will recognize military reality. Space is an increasingly critical battlefield. Read this again. I want y'all to understand. This is in an article. Read it again. This man, space is what? Space is an increasingly critical battlefield. He said space is an increasingly what? Increasingly critical battlefield. It's, it is a critical battlefield. So understand, this is what I want you to understand, you so-called blacks and Hispanics. If space is an increasing battlefield, who is going to defend you? You blacks and Hispanics, we don't have our own foot military. Right. What's going to happen when troops are in the space? What are you going to do? Understand where your defense coming from. Your only defense against this man is Jesus the Christ and the keeping of the command. Right. There's no protesting, there's no rioting that you can do that can defend you from this beast that the Most High God has created. Right. You must come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments and repent. Now, I'm going to show you exactly why the space is an increasing critical battlefield. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 15. I'm going to show you exactly what battle is going to take place in space, and who is going to win that battle, and who is this battle being waged for. That is why we're trying to teach you how beautiful you are in God's eyes, that he's going to send his one and only son to come back and rule the earth for your soul. That's what he's coming for. Read that, Isaiah 66. Bring it up. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 15. Uh -huh. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots, like a and with what? And with his chariots, uh -huh. like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fight with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh -huh. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. So the most high God, his son Christ, is going to return with a whirlwind and with swords and with flames. The white man understands that. But us simple black people, we still sit around and we sell drugs to one another. We hold out one another, not understanding what's taking place. Read that again. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Why is it that in every movie they always show the end of the world being with flames and fire and bombs? Because they understand how Jesus Christ is going to return upon the face of the earth. It's not going to be with flood, it's not going to be with butterflies, it's not going to be with candy. It's going to be with flames of fire. And the only way to avoid that fire is to be underneath the heads of the Most High God and His Son, Jesus the Christ. That's why we are here teaching. Pick up where you left off. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the what? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. It says, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. That is why we come out here and teach with such passion. We don't want you to be in that number of those that are going to perish with flames of fire. Right. We come out here to teach you how to repent properly according to the Bible. Now, you might not believe that. You say, okay, he's going to return with flames of fire. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to show you. Jesus the Christ said himself how he was going to return upon the face of the earth. And that's why the white man predicates all his money, all his military power, all his science is going to operations in space. Right. Because that's the last frontier. That is where the last battlefield will be. Right. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh -huh. When they therefore were come together, they asked to him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So this is another cut to all of you that want to love all people. That want everybody to be into the kingdom of heaven. When he said, without it, what? Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said, will you give heaven back? to the nation of Israel. Right. Our people were never concerned with our nations. Right. That is just today in America where we have been assimilated
assimilated, not a multicultural uh, community. We have been assimilated into the Idumian culture. Right. Now we want the Chinese man to rule with us. Right. Now we want the Korean man to rule with us. Now we want the Arab man to rule with us. Never have we had that mindset until we've been brainwashed and placed in slavery for over 400 years. Right. Our people were always concerned with our own. But now we want to worry about everybody. Right. And what happens when you do that? You end up on the bottom. That's why when you go all throughout the four corners of the earth, where do you find the Israelites? Always at the bottom of society. Right. When you assimilate, you lose. Understand that. Keep reading. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, uh -huh. which the Father have put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come up upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, uh -huh. and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Right, and that's what you're seeing today. We're going forth throughout the four corners of the earth, spreading that those that went through the the sub-Saharan slave trade, that those that went through the transatlantic slave trade, that those that went through all the oppression that you read about in this Bible, those are the Israelites. Right. That's what we're teaching to the uttermost parts of the earth. Read. Jesus, Jesus did catch come up and take a break. Oh, I'm reading the wrong way. Verse nine, and we have spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him, received him out of their sight. And a what? And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, uh -huh. which also said, Ye men of Galilee, ye men of Galilee, read, why stand ye gazing up unto the heaven? So when Christ ascended back to heaven, Two of his disciples were looking. They were stuck looking in the sky. And he said, why are you staring up in the sky like that? Read. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, uh -huh. shall so come in like manner. He shall what? Shall so come in like manner Read. as he has seen him going to heaven. So, the same way Christ left from the sky is the same way he is going to return from the sky. Understand that. That is why all political powers across the face of the earth are joined together to create forces to fight against Jesus the Christ when he returns. Right. Understand that. It's high time for you to wake up out of sleep. Stop fighting over street corners and neighborhoods and gather yourselves together as the Bible has instructed you. Go to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Seeing it as a righteous thing with God, with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. God says it is a righteous thing for him to recompense tribulation upon those that trouble you. So the question that you got to ask yourself, who has troubled the black, Hispanic, and Native American man for over 400 years? Bring it out. Who is your oppressor? Who has placed our people in the slums and ghettos across America? Right. Who has put chains upon your neck? Who has sold your mother, your father, your daughter, your grandmothers into slavery? Right. Who has done that? Who is shooting our people down left and right in the street corners across America? Right. Bring it out. Think. Wake up, black man. Read. And to you who are troubled, rest. And to what? And to you who are troubled. And to you that are troubled. That is our people. We are the only people that are troubled upon the face of the earth. We don't know whether we're coming or we're going. Right. We deal with single parent households. Right. We deal with drugs in the community. Right. We deal with unevil pay rate. Right. We deal with not being able to get a job. Right. We deal with over, over imprisonment in our communities. It says to them that are troubled, rest. Read. Rest with us. Uh -huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. When the Lord Jesus what? Shall be revealed from heaven. That is when your rest is coming. Understand, on tax day is not your rest. When you get a new job, it's not your rest. Right. On payday is not your rest. When Florida State wins the national championship, that is not your rest. Right. Understand that. Your rest cometh when Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with flame and fire. Right. That is what you should be preparing for. Not for Christmas, not for Thanksgiving. Read it again. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. 
when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire. And what? And flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. You see that? God is going to take vengeance on each of you who do not know God. That's right. That is why we are here teaching you the true gospel of the Bible. Right. That you must come back to God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Because if not, you're going to be numbered with the sinners. Give me that in uh, Peter where it says the righteous shall scarcely be saved. We're going to show you that, uh, yeah, it's Peter. That's right, it's Peter, right? Righteous shall be saved. Scarcely saved. We're going to show you that it's not by a large margin that you are going to receive salvation. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, chapter 4, and verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. And if the what? And if the righteous scarcely be saved. Understand, the Bible says that the righteous amongst us will scarcely be saved. Read. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So God says, if the righteous of our people are scarcely going to be saved, where is the ungodly and the sinner going to appear? Right. Those are the questions that you need to ask your pastor and your preacher. If God, you need to say, pastor, God says the righteous are scarcely going to be saved. So what you need to ask is, how do I become a righteous individual? Yep. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. I'm going to show you what it means to be righteous. Right. So guess what? When that righteous is scarcely saved, you will be in that number. If not, you'll appear with the multitude that are going to perish. Because right. it says many that it says many that be, but few shall be saved. Right. Understand that. Few shall be saved. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And it shall be our righteousness. And we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. So, it says that you are righteous when you keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's right. Go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 71. We're still going to keep harping on this space war. I want y'all to understand very clearly, there's only one reason why all of the effects of the earth are happening. It's because the children of Israel are finally awakening to who they are. Right. Right. That is the biggest secret upon the face of the earth. Right. It's not who's getting drafted first. It's not who's going to get traded. Right. It's not which mixtape is coming out. It's not who killed X Existential. That's not, that's not big news. Right. The big news is that Jesus Christ is a black man and he's coming back to save the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans that have been oppressed for years upon the face of this earth. That's right. That's the secret. That's what they don't want you to find out. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 71. Uh -huh. That we shall be saved. That what? That we shall be saved. From who? From our enemy. So, here we go again. Why does the Bible keep mentioning one group of people that's oppressed and one people that are oppressing individuals? How is that when God loves everybody? Right. Because you have been taught a lie. Right. Mainstream Christianity is a joke. Right. They do not teach the pure doctrine of this Bible. That's right. I'm going to show you out of the Bible that God does not love everybody. Right. Give me Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Look this is out. in the New Testament. Because I know you never heard this before because they would not dare teach it. When you teach that one people have been oppressed, somebody must admit that they were wrong. And the white man would never admit that he was wrong for what he did to your forefathers. Read, it out. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse 13. Uh -huh. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. What? Jacob have I loved, Read. but Esau have I hated. God says, Jacob have he loved, but Esau have he hated. Esau, according to the Bible, is the European man. No, the no. white man upon the face of the earth. Right. The man that rules the earth today. So, you might say, well, if God loves us, why are we at the bottom of society? Why are we being oppressed? Why are we not able to get a job? Why don't we have houses? Why don't we live on the beach side in Daytona Beach? Right. Why is that? I'm going to show you why. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Bring it up. I'm going to show you why this happens. I'm going to show you why it's unequal. There's no equality in the Bible. There's no equality in earth. That's right. They only tell you that so you can aspire to be equal. Meanwhile, they never want to be equal with you. Right. They showed you that for years. Have you forgotten about Jim Crow? Have you forgotten when your mother and father wanted to sit down to use the same bathroom as the white man, they kicked them out and called dogs and fire hoses? Right. 
Those are the same people that are your politicians today, that sit on every council and board for the city commission. Right. You think they taught their children anything different? Because Absolutely not. Those are the same individuals. You got that Hebrews? Yeah. Start in verse uh, 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth. For whom the Lord loveth. We just read in Romans chapter 9 and verse 13 who he loved. He loved the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are the sons of Jacob, which is named to the nation of Israel. Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. That means correct. Read. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Every son whom he receiveth. That's us. That is why we are being oppressed. That is why we are put down on the bottom. Where is that where it says uh, uh, um, he uses them as, as a sword? He's a white man as a sword. Psalm 17 and Read me that. Psalm 17 and 13. Who does the Most High use to oppress us? I'm going to show you. It's not by chance that it's set up like this. You got it? The book of Psalms, chapter 17 and verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. From the what? From the wicked. God says, deliver our souls from the wicked, who, which are what? Which is thy sword. Which is what? Which is thy sword. The white man is God's sword. Right. He is the belt that the Most High God uses to punish and discipline us. Right. That is, why is it that there's always a black-white issue? Because from the beginning, the Most High God set us at odds against one another. That is how it's set up. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 25, it says, They shall be two manner of people in thy womb. Right. We are different in every way, shape, form, and fashion. Go back to Hebrews 12. All right? It says, He scourges those who he loveth. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. Verse 8, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Right, so it says if you do not receive chastisement for your evil, you are bastards and not sons. That is why the white man can rape, rob, and murder everywhere across the face of the earth and still rule the world because he is not a son of God. He is not the child of God. Right. That's what the Bible's letting you know. Because there's no way he can set up a church in the same place where he had raped, robbed, and murdered and not have been judged yet. Right. You know. This has been going on for years. Since the time of the Renaissance period up until today, he continues to be a murderer and nothing has happened. Right. How is no bomb dropped on American soil? How has that happened? Because he is not the son of God. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.